is with your friends and family. If you go out, celebrate, but do so responsibly. I beg you, don't drink and drive, and certainly don't boat and drink. I'm your host, Woody DeCosta. Godspeed, K-Man, until tomorrow. Three, two. We believe that every life matters and that we are all connected. One community, one people. We believe in compassion to give dignity to those that society has let down. We strive to conquer fear, and we believe that the power to heal is a gift. This is who we are. This is what we believe. Holy Cross. Whether you want to get going in a new car, to relax at home while you pay bills on your mobile banking app, to get the best rewards with your credit card, or to get a sure start on your little one's future. Whether you want a quick response on your loan, or just a range of services that keep your business running smoothly, you want banking that fits your life. CIBC First Caribbean. Banking that fits your life. We do a whole lot more than just cover your floor at Paramount. Paramount Carpet. Any style, carpet or tile, insulation and drywall too. Everything's beautiful, come and see. The Paramount name means quality. It'll be a brand new world under your feet. We do a whole lot more than just cover your floor at Paramount. Paramount Carpet. Coming up next, Cayman's new governor, Martin Keith Roper, officially takes office. And we'll have the governor live here at Governor's House, where he'll tell you what his plans are for Cayman. I'm Rick stay tuned. Safety officers launch investigations after a man is killed in an industrial accident in Bodentown. The CIFA season kicks off with its men's and women's charity shield, plus Cayman Nepal returns from Canada after its tri-series. And a breezy start to the work week as a cold front comes through the area. I'll have a full forecast for you coming up later in the show. Cayman 27 News is coming up next. back. Sign up for the Sports Pack today and fuel your passion for football. Sports is life, only on Flow. Let elite marble and granite bring the charm of Italy to your home. Made from only the best materials. Santa Margarita Quartz is handcrafted at a state-of-the-art facility located in Italy and then journeys across the ocean to elite marble and granite, who is the exclusive distributor in the Caribbean. Elegant and resistant, Santa Margarita Quartz products offer a large choice of colors, textures, and exclusive finishes. Call 945-9028 or visit us online at elite.ky. Elite Marble and Granite, where perfection costs less. Come receive your miracle, your healing, salvation, encouragement. Hear the word of the Lord from David Turner, Monday to Wednesday, November 5 to 7 at 7 p.m. at Town Hall, Georgetown, 42 Fort Street, Grand Cayman. Admission free. Call 345-925-7798 or email info at avodaproductions.com. Experience healing through worship. Experience the anointing as David Turner ministers. Don't you miss it. You're watching K-Man 27 News, K-Man Informed. Brought to you by Foster's Food Fair. At Foster's Food Fair, we care. Flow. Good evening, I'm Dr. Taylor Burroughs. Thank you for tuning in. Governor Martin Roper was officially sworn into his new post at the Legislative Assembly this afternoon. The official ceremony took place at 3 p.m. and was attended by members of Cabinet, Opposition and the general public. Cayman 27's Caroline James was at the ceremony and she's now here in the studio with the details of Governor Roper's first address to the nation. During his speech, Mr. Roper didn't shy away from any of the more controversial aspects of his appointment. He alluded to Mr. Chowdhury's removal from office, 
but gave no further details surrounding the FCO investigation. He also hinted at the controversy surrounding the gay rights case currently going through the Cayman courts. He promised equality for all Cayman Islanders. Most tellingly, here's what he had to say about the state of the current relationship between the UK and Cayman, in particular in reference to beneficial ownership. I'm very aware of the importance of financial services to the Cayman Islands economy, and in particular that beneficial ownership has been a difficult area in the UK's relationship with the Cayman Islands for some time. And I recognise the concern caused by the passing in the UK of the Sanctions and Anti-Money Laundry Act. Balancing the Cayman Islands' right to compete and set its rates of taxation with the high standards needed to prevent harmful use of financial services will continue to pose challenges. Mr Roper also announced two new initiatives. One involved the collaboration between his office and the Cayman Islands Crisis Centre to launch a new child line, the second of which would strengthen the RCIPS Air Operations Unit. I'm pleased to announce that the UK and the Cayman Islands are now discussing the potential for a joint project to purchase and operate a second helicopter. If approved, this would not only be used to provide greater resilience to the Cayman Islands, but also to support vital operations for disaster relief and law enforcement in the other overseas territories, as we saw last year when the RCIPS helicopter deployed so successfully to TCI after Hurricane Irma. Mr Roper also gave some hints at the style he'll be adopting as governor. He promised more use of social media to increase transparency of the office. He promised to be accessible, straightforward, open and willing to listen. And prior to his swearing in, Mr Roper was warmly welcomed upon his arrival this morning at the Owen Roberts International Airport. Cayman 27's Seaford Russell Jr. was there and he has more. We're all very excited to um, welcome him to, to the Cayman Islands and to show him uh, all the good things that we're doing in the Cayman Islands. Cayman's 14th Governor Martin Keith Roper arrived Monday morning on a Cayman Airways flight and he was greeted by many dignitaries. The man who acted as Governor Post for the last five months says he's looking forward to working with Governor Roper. He has been working in various jurisdictions, so I'm sure he'll have great experiences to share with us as to how we can move to how our world-class civil service. Deputy Governor Franz Manderson served as acting governor, but now that Governor Roper is here, he says it's back to what he loves best. I must tell you that I enjoy my deputy governor's role better. House Speaker Makiva Bush congratulated Mr. Manderson for the work he did during his time in the post. Honorable Franz Manderson and Mrs. Gloria McPhil Nixon have held the fort. Um, in terms of the Legislative Assembly, they have held the fort, and I think in terms of the entire civil service, we can say that they did an excellent job in the interim. Mr. Bush says he knew that a new governor would be appointed following Governor Anwar Chaudhary controversial removal four months after he was sworn in. Um, he's, he's gone and I didn't I never did expect him to come back. Um, I had a good relationship while he was here but I don't know any details. Um, every time I got in and I rode with my mother-in-law I didn't get fired for it. But he says he hopes Mr. Roper will be here for a full term. We hope he's going to be permanent for the duration that they usually are. And now that Governor Roper is here, Mr. Manderson says it's time for some rest. So I am actually looking forward to some vacation now. <laughs> yeah, no, C4 Russell Jr., Cayman 27. Now that the formalities are over, Cayman's new governor, Martin Roper, is settling into his new role. And right now, preparations are underway for Mr. Roper's welcome reception at Government House. Cayman 27's Reshma Raghunath is standing by live with a very special guest, Governor Martin Roper. Reshma? Thank you very much, Taylor. You're right. I'm standing by with a very special guest, the man of the hour, Mr. Martin Keith Roper, our new governor. First of all, Mr. Roper, you've had a whirlwind day. What's the feeling like? 
Um, well, first of all, let me say it's a huge honour and a privilege to be appointed um, as Governor of the Cayman Islands by Her Majesty the Queen. Um, it creates a, an immediate and, and special bond with the people of the Cayman Islands. Um, and I have had a, a very busy day, a wonderful ceremony, swearing-in ceremony, this, this great reception um, this evening, um, and I'm absolutely delighted to be here. Okay, so you had the swearing-in. Um, before we get to that actual official ceremony, um, you were posted in Beijing. Um, this would be a, a ch would it be a change? a change of pace for you from Beijing to the Cayman Islands? Um, it's certainly a change, but I think one of the things about being governor is the, the great sense of responsibility it brings and also a sense of duty to, to serve the people of these wonderful islands. So um, I think that is a, is a huge responsibility and I'm really looking forward to working very closely with the Premier, the government, um, the civil service um, and all sectors of society in trying to deliver enhanced security and prosperity for the people of these great islands. Okay, so today you had your swearing in and you delivered your first address to the mm. nation. Um, tell the people of the Cayman Islands, what are some of your immediate plans as governor? Well, I will focus on those areas um, under the constitution where the governor has uh, specific powers. So I think security is absolutely fundamental to any, any country. So um, ensuring that uh, Cayman Islands is, is safe is, is a big priority. I also hope to be able to support the government's efforts on trade and investment and my experience in China will, uh, will I hope, be, be, be valuable. Um, upholding the rights of, of everybody on these islands is, uh, is very important. And you have a, a fantastic financial services industry and a high-quality tourism sector, and safeguarding those, I think, is, is hugely important. Being crisis-ready and, and prepared for, for disasters is also a hugely important task um, of the governor working with the government. So those are some of the immediate priorities. But what I really want to say and I'm just delighted to be here. I've heard so many positive things about the Cayman Islands um, and you have um, a, an extensive level of, of self-government um, and are a beacon in this region in terms of uh, the way you run the territory and that's something that all people in the Cayman Islands can be proud of. Now, in your speech today, you talked about the relationship between the UK and its overseas territories, in particular the Cayman Islands, and you also touched on the constitutional changes that the Cayman Islands is seeking. Um, would that be part of your priority list to address those concerns? Um, I, I first of all want to listen. I think it's it's very important that, um, that that as the governor tries to represent the views of the territory back to London, I first need to understand and listen to the views of the Premier, Leader of the Opposition um, and other members of, of the government and other sectors of society. Um, so I think today it's about it's about listening and, and over the next couple of weeks I've got uh, lots of opportunities to, to do that. Um, I do also want to get out um, and visit the other parts of the sister islands, um, Little Cayman and Cayman Brown which we'll be visiting later this weekend and then other parts of the district here on, on Grand Cayman. So on day one, um, I think I would leave it there. All right, so we had some questions that were sent in by some students at First Baptist, um, High, First Baptist School. Right. One of the questions the students was asked is to ask you what part of England are you from and what's your favourite football team? <laughs> right, well I'm from Halifax in West Yorkshire. It's a right in the centre of, uh, of the United Kingdom where I, where I grew up as a, as a child. Um, and my favourite football team is Chelsea. Um, and I've, even though they are a southern team and I'm from the north, I've supported Chelsea since I was very small um, and continue to support them. Well, hopefully you're going to support the Cayman Islands team, right, guys? <laughs> I would love to do that. Yeah, very much so. All right. So when do you officially take up office? Your first day at work. Will that be tomorrow? I, I will. I should be going in uh, tomorrow morning. So after the swearing-in ceremony today, um, I've now sort of taken over as uh, as governor. And I would like to pay a special tribute to, to Franz Manderson, the, who has been the acting uh, governor over the last few months for, for the outstanding job um, that he has done. But uh, I'm looking forward to, to starting work tomorrow. All right, great. Thank you so much, Mr. Roper. Pleasure to meet Thank you. you very Thank much. you for speaking with us. Okay. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, Cayman Islands Governor, Mr. Martin Roper, on his first day here and, of course, exclusively speaking with the Cayman, Cayman News team. All right, Taylor, I'll send it back to you guys. This is Rachel Moraganath reporting live from Governor's House. Thank you, Rashma. Very exciting stuff. And after the break, colors kick off their hunt for Cayman's invasive green iguanas today. And a new online option opens up for vehicle registration renewals. And Cayman is days away from a new increased duty allowances. That and more after the break.
Make the most of your morning at Burger King with Burger King's unbeatable breakfast special. Two Chris sandwiches for just $4. Take two bacon, egg, and cheese Chris sandwiches, two sausage, egg, and cheese, or mix and match. Add a refreshing OJ or delicious hash browns, plus tea or coffee for a true breakfast of champions. Two Chris sandwiches for just $4, available until 10.30 weekdays and 11 a.m. on weekends. Only at Burger King, Seven Mile Beach, Waterfront, Walker's Road, Town Center Plaza, and now Red Bay. Ever wondered what smart health insurance feels like? Premier Health's 24-7 worldwide health insurance does most of the thinking for you. 1,500 CGI health claims are settled daily. 55% of claims settled automatically. You can access your health plan almost anywhere, anytime. And have smart wellness with online data tracking. And more provider choices for you and the people who matter most. Premier Health is smart health insurance and it feels good. Brit K, where people come first. Both police and health and safety officers from the Department of Labor and Pensions have launched investigations after a man was killed in an industrial accident yesterday. Two others were also injured. The incident happened around 4 p.m. at a quarry on Lakeview Drive in Bodentown. Police say the men were using an industrial compressor to put, an, put air in the tire when the tire exploded, leaving a 54-year-old man dead and two others with non-life-threatening injuries. According to police protocol, the name of the victim will not be released until his relatives are notified. Police say foul play is not suspected after a man is found dead inside a Georgetown residence on Saturday. According to our CIPS, officers responded to the residence around 9 a.m. after receiving a report that a man may be dead or in need of assistance inside a Randyke Gardens residence. After receiving no response from victim inside the, from within the residence, the officers gave entry to the home and found the body of a man in his 60s. Inquiries are continuing. The 2018-2019 Green Iguana Call is officially underway. Call participants delivered iguanas by the hundreds to be counted this morning, as the effort to call 1.4 million iguanas by the end of 2019 begins. Cayman 27's Joe Avery joins us with more. Thanks, Taylor. As you can imagine, dealing with hundreds of green iguana carcasses is not pretty. I watched today as callers went through the intake process this morning at the counting station near the entrance to the Georgetown landfill, and everything appeared to be flowing as smoothly as possible. Thus far, we've probably counted about 2,000 iguanas, and it's been about two hours or two or three hours. So we expect to probably get about 6,000 iguanas on day one. Off to a good start, says coal manager Carl Noble. He and his iguana control project team are tasked with keeping count of the numbers and paying registered callers for their efforts. So we're trying to make sure that the count is consistent, so there's no, we won't miscount. So we're actually making sure it goes very slowly, two at a time, and we go from there. It's been very straightforward thus far. K-Man 27 cameras were not allowed to film near the counting station due to concerns that some in the public may find the imagery disturbing. Some iguanas arrive in better shape than others, says Department of Environment Terrestrial Resources Unit Manager Fred Burton. One practice that, uh, that we need to put a stop to is um, unnecessarily decapitating the iguanas, bringing the heads here, and then dumping the bodies irresponsibly in public dumpsters or in public places. That is not okay. As the calling continues, Mr. Noble says the management team will educate callers on best practices. So we're going to get the iguanas in different states, but the key thing is that they're deceased and that they're called in a, as human a way as possible. And while the early results seem positive, Mr. Burton says the DOE will watch the progress closely to see if callers can meet their quotas. Adaptive management is the name of the game because we honestly are going into an activity here that we've never really done on this scale before. Now, the DOE says the next couple of months will give the department a sense of how the project is going. Mr. Burton says the call project steering committee will keep tabs on the process and intervene, if necessary, with adjustments. And as far as the numbers go, the DOE says we can expect regular updates starting tomorrow. And as colors hit the ground running, the RCIPS is reminding them to obey land and property owners' rights to privacy. Both the RCIPS and the Department of Environment says colors have to ensure they observe all laws when pursuing the invasive green iguanas. You need to have the permission of the landowner, the express permission of the landowner to call on their property. So that's, that's what you need to do if you're going to be calling any iguana on a person's private property. 
Over 340 people have signed up for the 2018 Green Iguana Call. Commerce Minister Joey Hughes says the hopes, he hopes the public will take advantage of the new online option for vehicle registration renewals. Mr. Hughes says the DVDL handles around 8,000 renewals per month. Now that a new online option is available, customers can skip the queue at the counter entirely. We there. can't make it any simpler. Uh, when I first took office, they came to me and said we need to build bigger buildings, we need more counters, and the response was no, we need to make it easier for people to transact with the government and not have to attend these offices so we don't have to keep building buildings. There are currently two DVDL services that can be done online, vehicle license renewals and driver's license renewal. Driver's license renewals can only be done if you are a registered user, which requires you to get an e-signature number or an ESID in person from the DVDL. For license, vehicle license renewals, no ESID is needed for the online platform. And Joe Avery is next with a check on weather. Joe, how's it looking? Things are pretty good out there. What a gorgeous weekend. It's Monday. I can't really get over the weekend just yet because, you know, it, it was almost perfect. And, and we can kind of expect some of that. But we got those breezy conditions sticking around for the next few days. And it looks like, as I look down into the distance toward the next weekend, we're going to have a pretty good one in store, too. You won't want to miss my forecast, guys, the, the, the full one, not just this little mini forecast. Great, Joe. From Thursday, residents and Caymanians returning from abroad will see a rise in the value of goods they're allowed to bring back into the country without incurring customs duty. That's when the new personal import duty allowances kick in. Finance Minister Roy McTaggart explained why government introduced the increased allowance even though the duty has been a lucrative source of income in the past. Uh, we thought really that it was a way to try and, and help the, the average Caymanian put a little more money in their pockets. Uh, you're also going to see that too with the, you know, the enhancements we're proposing to make with the stamp duty amendment law to give uh, middle and lower income Caymanians a, a, a good break with regard to the payment of stamp duties on their first land or property acquisition. Uh, all designed to, to help our people and also to, you know, to stimulate the, the continued growth. The personal import duty allowance when shopping overseas will increase from $500 uh, to $500 from $350, and that's from the 1st of November. West Bay resident Alejandro Cardenas Powery has appeared in court on attempted murder charges. The 26-year-old was charged following an incident at a residence on West Bay on October 21st. In that incident, a woman was attacked with a knife, and she was treated at the Cayman Islands Hospital for non-life-threatening injuries. Mr. Cardenas Powery is also facing charges of threats to kill and wounding. He was remanded into custody and he returns to court on November 9th. And Jordan Armanis is up next with a check on sports. Lots to jump in there. Number one, had no idea the governor was a Chelsea fan. I thought he'd be a West Ham fan like myself. <laughs> Number two, interesting story about the DVDL. I was down there, the one off Crew Road. Thank you for letting me in, very pleasant lady, at 8 o'clock. Even though you only open at 8.30, they still let us sit in the chairs. However, the printer is down if you're doing a, a license renewal like I was this morning. So make sure to go to West Bay, everyone. Nevertheless, sports continues. Charity Shields this weekend, men's and women's. Molly Kehoe, she was in the mood to score. How many? Tune in after commercial, and you'll see. Vogel Insurance Brokers Limited are professional, independent insurance brokers established in 1988. We are a wholly Caymanian-owned insurance broker with a wealth of knowledge in the local and international insurance market. Our professional team service clients with a range of insurance products, including motor, home, health, contractors, marine, and business insurance, among others. Contact us at 949-0579 or email us at service at bogleins.com. Young Miguel age are old, move your feet when bass if you dance, everybody 
have to do it. Grace, feel the vibe, can't you feel it? Grace, delicious, so nutritious. Yes, quality when it is there. Want affordable? Look for the lace. Flavor, we are flavor because the spice is clear. Flavor, we don't beat no other brand than the near way. One taste and you know grace is real. Have you heard? They have new daily meal deals at Popeyes. A different meal with side every day of the week for the same price of just $3.99. Monday is chicken soup with rice. Tuesday for the chicken bowl. Two tenders on Wednesday. A loaded chicken wrap on Thursday. It's all about that shrimp on Friday. Chicken nuggets to start the weekend. And the mixed two-piece to finish. The new daily meal deals from Popeyes. A different meal every day served with the world-famous best-dressed chicken for only $3.99. Only at Popeyes, Louisiana Kitchen on Eastern Avenue. In 27 Sports is brought to you by Elite Marble and Granite, where perfection costs less. All right, welcome back, you man. Let's start on the track. Thursday's Public Accounts Committee meeting revealed just part of government's investment into the 48th staging of the Carifta Games. That's, of course, in April 2019, right here in Cayman. Now, Public Accounts Committee Chair Ezard Miller inquired about government's general procurement process during the meeting and government's financial secretary, Kenneth Jefferson, used April's Carifta Games as a point of clarification when explaining an instance in which government would expedite the procurement process. Now, now, here's Jefferson on how much government will spend on that new track down at the True Modern Sports Complex. We were told by the Department of Sports that, you know, given the lead time necessary, you know, we have to have a decision put it promptly if, if Carifta in, in April 2019 is going to happen. Um, was the, the value of that particular um, project was, wasn't tremendously huge. It was around about a million U.S. dollars. Now, government's commitment also includes a new scoreboard for the Truman Biden Sports Complex, as well as providing the LOC with $200,000 up front to secure hotels for athletes and coaches. Now, Freedom of Information requests submitted by Kima 27 to the ministry asked to disclose those financial contributions in full to the games. We also followed up with an email, but did not hear back. All right, switching gears, Cayman's national netball team looked to regain its international netball ranking this past weekend in a tri-series versus Canada, their first international play of the year. How did they do? Well, Cayman would suffer the same fate as their 2017 series versus Canada. It was a clean sleep for Cayman. Three games to nil for Canada, 78-31 in game one, 67-28 in game two, and 58-37 in game three. Remember... Tonight, Let's Talk Sports will have Kim and Netball Stacey Ann Kelly. She'll tell us about the entire series versus Canada. All right, switching gears, the Cayman Islands Football Association kicked off Sunday with its men's and women's charity shield matches at the TE McField Sports Complex in Georgetown. We start with the Women League champion Scholars International taking on last year's charity shield winner Sunset FC. First half, added time, already 3-0 Sunset. Molly Keel, nice run down the left side, fires and beats Christina Seymour, 4-0 Sunset. Second half, 48th minute, more Sunset. Keel takes the through ball all the way up the pitch. She turns, makes a move, fires, and Sunset running away with it, 5-0. 55th minute, Keel again. This time she takes the pass, makes a foot move, finds Elena to story. She fires at home, 6-0 Sunset. Scholars would fight back to make it 6-2, but in the 83rd minute, Chanel Frederick, she says, listen, I got this, makes a solo run, and it would pay off right through the defense. Here it is, boom! Sunset wins 7-3 the final. Here's Chanel go on the win. It was a, it was a good game for uh, obviously coming back to start the season up. Uh, it was a good game. Uh, we scored a lot of goals, so that's a good sign for sure. Uh, obviously, we need to work on our fitness. Uh, that, that showed a lot, but... I guess overall, again, you know, we want a silverware, and uh, so that, that's a good feeling, so we want to build from that. All right, Men's Charity Shield champion Scholars versus FBA Cup Winners Academy. Tenth minute, Scholars cross, Raleigh Bodden gathers and fires. He makes no mistake, 1-0 Scholars. Thirtieth minute, Academy answers. Cross lands on the foot of that man, Jamal Seymour. He makes no mistake. 1-1. One, one. Now the second half, 47th minute, Academy set piece. Clayton Forrest rises for the header. It's in, and Academy leads to 1. 51st minute, Scholars now inside the box. Pressuring, floater hits the net. Dwight Dunn flies in like a ninja. 
This game's tied 2-2. 64th minute, check out the Scholars passing. Absolute clinic here. Little tick, tack, and toe. Raleigh Bodden, second of the game. Scholars lead 3-2, they'd add a fourth. They win 4-2. Here's Roger Pearson on the win. You know, teamwork makes the dream work. And once once we come as a team and play as a team, it's it, the task is easy, man. As you can see, we went down, you know, one time in the game. We don't put our head down. To me, that motivates us. That make that drive us when we go down. That drive us even because we know it's a simple mistake. And once we correct that, as you can see, the result. Scholars locked in. All right, Joe's got your weather next. Stick around. Some say the time of miracles has passed, but we see miracles all around us every day. Some could not walk. Some could not breathe. Some had lost all hope, but something amazing happened, something that can't be analyzed or quantified, something that is more than good medicine. Holy Cross. It's time to celebrate. Join family and friends as we honor UCCI's graduating class of 2018. EY is proud to be the exclusive television broadcast sponsor of the University College of the Cayman Islands graduation ceremony. Tune in to Cayman 27 Thursday, November 1st at 7 p.m. Let's celebrate our graduates and their new beginnings. Live on Cayman 27 Thursday, November 1st at 7 p.m. EY, proud telecast sponsor, committed to giving back to the community and recognizing talent. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. That sweet couple today visiting on a cruise ship from Augusta, Georgia. They said, hey, sir, you look like a professional. Will you take our picture today? And I said, sure. So I took one on their phone, and then I got this sneaky shot of them just holding hands, looking all cute. Anyway, back out here. The radar's looking pretty cute, too. We can see some precipitation down there, kind of the south, southwest of Grand Cayman there, maybe 30, 40, 50 miles off the coast right there and drifting to the south, southwest right now as we monitor our current conditions weather paper we are monitoring a cold front that's kind of stalling out over the area i'm going to show you the satellite picture so you can get a glimpse of the cloud cover that we've got in the area right there well the machine's locked up for a little bit so we will just kind of scoot on by to the next screen right here and take a look at our tomorrow because it's tuesday could have the same breezy conditions maybe a 20 percent chance of showers in the morning time 10 to 15, uh, 15 to 20 knots uh, on the winds rather so that's going to mean four to six foot seas those flat calm seas we've been seeing through the week going away for a couple days but don't worry guys it will be back to pretty good conditions we expect that to happen coming into next week Mike uh, uh, we expect the turnaround to happen for Thursday and Friday there uh, don't let it fool you too much 20% chance of morning showers for our Tuesday right there it's gonna be nice and breezy for the next couple of days there I, uh, and uh, getting my weather paper out here. Maybe just a 30% chance of showers in Wednesday and Thursday, but not too shabby. Anyway, I got a weather pick of the day for you right now. Let's check it out. The Brack Beach cleanup before and after. What a difference a few uh, hands helping out clean the environment makes, huh, Taylor? That's a great story. Thanks, Joe. The Chamber of Commerce Business Excellence Awards was held at the Ritz-Carlton over the weekend. The award ceremony is held to honor the outstanding work conducted by chamber members and the private sector. Awards were given in various categories, and today Cayman 27 caught up with one of the winners, Eshore's Pamela Webster. 
Well, it's fantastic to win the Chamber of Commerce uh, Business of the Year Award for small to medium-sized businesses for eShore is fantastic. I've been gone 21 days on a road trip to 10 of the countries that we cover, including the Channel Islands and the Caribbean. So 15 years of working in the cybersecurity space, being based in the Cayman Islands as a female-run IT company is spectacular. You can head over to cayman27.ky to learn more about the Excellence Awards and the winners. And remember to WhatsApp us your photos, videos, and news tips. You can reach us at 527-2727. Welcome back. Despite a partial boycott of Saudi Arabia's, in Saudi Arabia's investment conference, the event wrapped up over the weekend with new deals and pledges to push ahead with projects aimed at divesting the economy from oil. We have more in this Reuters report. Over 25,000 square kilometers of inspiration. It's a project worth hundreds of billions of dollars. A new city in Saudi Arabia called Neom, whose economy will not rely on oil, but instead on new technologies and investment. At a three-day investment conference in Riyadh, its CEO did not hold back from touting the development. I don't recall a project ever in history with a number like $500 billion. And that is the proof that what we are going to do there is creating a new country in a country. NEOM is among three major projects that Riyadh insists will still go ahead, despite the murder of its dissident journalist Jamal Khashoggi, alleged to have been ordered or at least known about by the Saudi Crown Prince. It's led many from business and politics to pull out of the conference, although the kingdom says $56 billion worth of deals have still been signed at it. I think business is still being done in Riyadh. There have been a few political withdrawals. And if at any point any of the current diplomatic uh, problems were to result in sanctions, that could obviously um, have a, a larger impact on the oil price. But oil may become even less of a trump card for Saudi Arabia as it keeps pushing away from the commodity. Its finance minister says third quarter non-oil revenue jumped 48% from the same period last year to more than $56 billion. Up next, a check on Wall Street. It's fresh, 
Fresh from the garden, it's fresh. Hurley's introduces Chef Kits, the newest, easiest way to serve your family home-cooked meals in about 30 minutes. Every Chef Kit includes Hurley's fresh beef, chicken, fish, or veg, and pre-measured spices, sauces, oils, and seasonings. We include everything but the dinner plates. Simply follow the enclosed directions to create home-cooked, gourmet-inspired meals for two or four people. Hurley's Chef Kits, for fresh, easy, speedy meals your family will love. Sign up for the Sports Pack today and fuel your passion for football. Sports is life, only on Flow. Welcome back. It's time to check in with Wall Street. U.S. stocks fell today in a volatile session, hurt by fresh worries of an escalation of U.S.-China trade tensions. Added to this was a sharp drop in big tech and Internet names. Reuters' Fred Katayama reports. Wall Street's morning rally fizzled Monday afternoon in a volatile session. The Dow dropped 1%, joining the Nasdaq in correction territory after falling more than 10% from its record high. Investors fretting over an escalation of U.S.-China trade tensions. Comprehensive Wealth Management President John Vento. Between the Federal Reserve uh, hyping up interest rates and the fact that we have a midterm election this year, I think th those are things tend to create a lot of anxiety for investors. Helping boost the S&P 500, Red Hat, IBM, is buying the software developer for $34 billion. Big Blue shares fell. Ford and General Motors shares zoomed higher. Bloomberg reports China plans to cut the tax on car purchases by half. Tesla rallied. The Times reports a top shareholder, Bailey Gifford, is willing to invest more cash into the electric automaker. In economics news, consumer spending rose in the U.S. for a seventh straight month in September, but income notched its smallest gain in more than a year. Like the U.S., a rally in financials and telecom stocks lifted the European markets. Up next, world news and stories from around the region. We are on a mission, a mission to protect people from financial risk that can affect their money. We're Knighthead Annuity and Life Assurance, a Cayman Islands company. It is more important than ever to make sure you have the right financial plan in place to secure your future. So we're on a journey, a journey to change an industry that can too often feel complex, confusing, and costly. We're making things simpler by specializing in fixed annuities. An essential product in any portfolio to help you grow and protect your savings by providing guaranteed investment returns. Predictable growth, peace of mind with Nighthead Annuity. It's time to celebrate. Join family and friends as we honor UCCI's graduating class of 2018. EY is proud to be the exclusive television broadcast sponsor of the University College of the Cayman Islands graduation ceremony. Tune in to Cayman 27 Thursday, November 1st at 7 p.m. Let's celebrate our graduates and their new beginnings live on Cayman 27 Thursday, November 1st at 7 p.m. EY, proud telecast sponsor, committed to giving back to the community and recognizing talent. Get the quality, the service, the wide range of products in the BRAC. Everything you love about Paramount Carpets is now available on Cayman Brac. Carpets, flooring, drywall, paints, windows and doors, lumber. From plumbing to electrical supplies, you'll find it all and a whole lot more at Paramount Carpets. Cayman Brac. We do a whole lot more than just cover your floor at Paramount Carpets. 
Welcome back. In world news, a Lion Air flight with 189 people on board crashed into the sea and sank minutes after takeoff from the Indonesian capital, Jakarta, today. Officials say the plane lost contact with ground officials shortly after its pilot asked to turn back to base. Reuters' Ryan Brooks reports. For 13 years, she's dominated European politics, but 64-year-old German chancellor and Christian... Lion Air passenger plane crashed into the sea near Indonesia on Monday with 189 people on board. Debris thought to be from the plane was found close to a refinery in the Java Sea. Officials say Lion Air flight JT610 is believed to have sunk after it went down, not long after leaving the capital, Jakarta. They also say the plane requested to return to base before it lost contact 13 minutes after takeoff. Officials say rescuers have retrieved body parts from the crash site, but they have not yet located the body of the plane. Family members arrived at Jakarta's airport Monday looking for answers, racked with fear and grief. But officials say they can't confirm the cause until they find the plane's black box cockpit recorder that captures voice and flight data. We will use a ping finder because the box emits a ping noise at the frequency of 390 kilohertz. There's also a sonar scanner. After that, we'll send in divers to find its position. According to tracking service Flight Radar 24, the plane was a Boeing 737 MAX 8. Lion Air's CEO says the plane had a technical issue in a previous flight but that it had been resolved. He also declined to say what that might have been. Lion Air says the plane had only been operated by the company since August. It also says the pilots had 11,000 hours of flight time between them. Lion Air has 10 other planes of the same model, but says the others haven't had the same technical issues, and there were no plans to ground the rest of its fleet. European political powerhouse German Chancellor Angela Merkel says she would not seek re-election as party chairwoman and that her fourth term as chancellor would be her last, a move that heralds the end of a 13-year era in which she had dominated European politics. More in this Reuters report. For 13 years, she's dominated European politics, but 64-year-old German Chancellor and Christian Democrats party leader Angela Merkel says her time in both roles is coming to an end. At the next CDU party congress in December in Hamburg, I will not put myself forward again as candidate for the CDU chair. And this fourth term is my last as German chancellor. I won't seek any further political offices. The announcement follows her party suffering its second regional election setback on Sunday in as many weeks. Coming first in the state election of Hesse, but seeing support for the CDU dropping 11%. Bigger gains were made by the parties further to the left and to the far right. Since 2005, Merkel's overseen some of the bloc's biggest challenges, from the Eurozone and Greek debt crisis to the height of the migration crisis in 2015. Her open-door policy for the latter triggering criticism from her opponents and voters. But before she goes, she says there are a few more issues she wants to see through. The main focus of our government is Brexit and the fact that the U.S. has announced to quit the nuclear deal. These are great foreign policy challenges. Investors have long seen the Chancellor as a stable figure in a Europe looking increasingly fractured and polarised. Perhaps unsurprisingly then, the euro plummeted 0.4% to session lows for a short time on the news. In regional news, Jair Bolsonaro has won a comprehensive victory in Brazil's presidential election this weekend. The former army captain won over 55% of the vote ahead of his left-wing rival, Mr. Bolsonaro, swept to victory on the back of his tough-talking pledge to fight crime and corruption. But critics have voiced concern about his comments on race, women, and homosexuality. Four Americans and their local guide who died during a rafting trip in Costa Rica have been named. Ernesto Sierra, Jorge Caso, Sergio Lorenzo, and Andres Dennis from Florida were killed alongside local guide Kevin Thompson Reed. The Americans were visiting on a bachelor party. Costa Rican officials are investigating the tour company responsible for the trip. And we have another check on the forecast for tomorrow in just a moment. 
Sometimes having a middleman is not a bad thing, especially when it comes to insurance. Do you know that when it comes to cost, ease, speed, and peace of mind, insurance brokers ranked higher than when customers buy direct? So, for all your insurance needs, call Fidelity Insurance. We're the middleman you want. Call us today at 949-7822. Fidelity, we're good for you. bring the world to you. We offer the best shipping rates and service to and from Grand Cayman with over 35 shipping routes, full container shipping from Miami, Brooklyn, Houston, and Jamaica, plus small package shipments from Miami and Jamaica. You name it and Seaboard will ship it. Our excellent warehouse facilities in Miami mean you can consolidate your goods to save yourself time and money. For shipping made easy, call or visit our website today. Shipping shore to shore. Seaboard. Shipping shore to shore. Let Elite Marble and Granite bring the charm of Italy to your home. Made from only the best materials. Santa Margarita Quartz is handcrafted at a state-of-the-art facility located in Italy and then journeys across the ocean to Elite Marble and Granite, who is the exclusive distributor in the Caribbean. Elegant and resistant, Santa Margarita Quartz products offer a large choice of colors, textures, and exclusive finishes. Call 945-9028 or visit us online at Elite.ky. Elite Marble and Granite, where perfection costs less. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We've got the Cayman 27 Fisherman's Forecast there. Let me walk in and point at it if possible. Well, that's not possible, but you can see low tide at 8.28 p.m., 7.55 a.m. and 9.50 p.m. tomorrow, and high tides happening tomorrow. Actually, tonight kind of, it's technically tomorrow, 1.08 a.m., 3.04 p.m. Uh, yeah, I, I, I kind of leave myself some room to stand out there. Anyway, let's take a look at the satellite picture right there. Uh, we've got some uh, high pressure kind of behind this cold front that's been working its way down uh, into the Northwest Caribbean. Uh, that's kind of driving some of the breeziness that we see. It'll be breezy today, tomorrow, and the next day. Let's go ahead, though, and take a look at the temperatures in the region right now. 84, Georgetown. Let's see the rest of Grand Cayman. Also at 84 degrees, these cool downs have been spectacular. Am I right? Am I right? Anyway, let's go to the sister islands where we're seeing even better cool down, a temperature of 82 degrees, uh, both in Little Cayman and on Cayman Brack. Got to say hello to the folks at Barracudas, by the way. Uh, can't leave you guys out. Taking a look at the region. Region, though we can see a mixture of 70s and 80s we can see Havana getting a cold front at 79 degrees uh, over in Roatan they're at actually 77 degrees and then uh, 73 is not really out of whack for what they see down there a lot of 70s 80s in the Eastern Caribbean 83 Port of Spain Trinidad for my Trinis out there holla anyway let's finish with the seven-day forecast right here we've got a whole week of weather ahead and uh, in terms of showers 20% chance of morning showers for your Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. We're giving you a 30% chance of showers, uh, four to six foot seas for tomorrow and the next day. But by the time the weekend rolls around, it is anticipated to calm down and be quite lovely again. Uh, nice spectacular Caribbean experience that we can all enjoy. Anyway, that's it for me, ladies and gentlemen. More world and regional sports with Jordan Armanis coming up next. We're not just the most reliable energy service in the Caribbean. Whether it's for your entertainment, lighting a path to your future, or making sure that you and your family are secure. We're there for you when it matters most. Your safety and our reliability are our top priority. We are committed to remaining the number one utility service in the Caribbean. We are CUC. Mom, I'm hungry. Me too. Honey, I need to fix the top in the kitchen today. <sighs> okay, okay. Everybody come with me. I know exactly where we can go. At Countryside, we have everything you need. Grab home essentials at A.L. Thompson. 
Convenient banking at Cayman National. Delicious slices from Pizza Hut. Always made fresh sandwiches at Subway. And find the best prices on island at Foster's Food Fair IPA. Countryside. Everything you need and more. Have you had your Tortuga moment today? Come by Tortuga Fine Wine and Spirits for all your liquor needs and taste the world-famous Tortuga Rum and Rum Cake. Always delicious and baked fresh daily in the captivating Cayman Islands. With ongoing renovations at the airport, we invite you to shop our stores and buy before you fly. Relive the Cayman Islands in every bite. Welcome back. We start on the pitch and tragedy struck the Premier League Saturday as Lester Ono, Visha, Sriva Pratahama and four others were killed when his helicopter crashed next to King Power Stadium and exploded after their match Sunday. Now Leicester City's first team squad gathered at the stadium Monday to pay tribute to the side's owner. Hundreds of people had queued this morning to lay toys, scarves, and bouquets to remember the much-loved owner who took over the club in 2010 and oversaw their incredible rise from second tier to Premier League title winners in 2016. Switching gears, Britain's Lewis Hamilton celebrated his fifth Formula One World Championship Sunday after a Mexican Grand Prix that was won by Red Bull's Max Verstappen for the second year in a row. The Mercedes driver equaled the five titles of the late 1950s Argentine Juan Manuel Fangio with only seven-time champion Ferrari's Michael Schumacher ahead of them. Now he needed to win to keep the driver standings alive. Ferrari's Sebastian Vettel took second. Hamilton needed only five points to be sure of the title. Verstappen, again, his second Mexican GP in a row in his fifth race, win race of his career all time. But the day belonged to Lewis since I was 13 so to complete this um, you know when Fangio had done it with Mercedes you know it's just a, it's an incredible an incredible feeling and then uh, very very surreal at the moment <laughs> Now, Ferrari's Kimi Raikkonen was third, meaning the Constructors' Championships remains open at least until next week's Brazilian GP, sorry, two weeks' time, with Mercedes' lead being trimmed just a bit. All right, baseball fans in Boston took to the streets as the Red Sox defeated the Los Angeles Dodgers 5-1 in Game 6 to win their ninth World Series title in franchise history. Taylor, back to you. And that's our news for tonight. But before we go, a very happy birthday to the karaoke king, Mr. Lenny Hugh, and belated happy birthday to Kevin's better half, Molly Morales. Happy birthday. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. We thank you for watching, and good night. Caymanian owned and operated since 1967. Paramount Carpets is a full service operation beginning with material selection to the installation of finished products as well as providing maintenance, service and takes great pride in the quality of their work, making every effort to exceed customer expectations. Contact us today at 345-949-5000 or visit us at 317 Industrial Park, North Sound Road. Paramount Carpets. We do a whole lot more than just cover your floor. Insurance Brokers Limited are professional independent insurance brokers established in 1988. We are a wholly Caymanian owned insurance broker with a wealth of knowledge in the local